doesn't matter what hurts this week, next week, the last couple of years. You can go into worship with absolutely no intention that you're going into worship for yourself. You're not asking the Lord for anything when you go into worship. You go into worship, worship to give Him everything. Amen. All the honor, all the praise, all the glory. Be to Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ. And then in the process of giving him all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, in return, you find healing, you find peace. But you must be willing to not care what the people around you think. If you stop and think about what they will think, if you crawl around in your own tears, the Lord got me in a couple of interesting positions there while I was worshipping, and it was good because I did not care who was looking at me because that moment is between me and him. Even though there's a whole bunch of people surrounding me, it doesn't matter. They do not exist in the moment you break down in worship. Remember that. Remember that the word worship means to lie, lie on your face, to go lay down in front of the Lord on your face, to give him all the honor. All the, it's not about you and nobody cares about you because the people around you are spending time with the Lord. If you're worried what they will think, you're not present with the Lord. Get present with him. It's my makeup storm. I don't think so. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It was a lovely worship session. That is why the Lord said, come together. Corporate worship is important. Some people will tell you because the Holy Spirit comes down. No, it doesn't come down. He's already here. But if we honor him, hmm. Things change. We change. And everything around us change. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you so lovingly and kindly and, and mercifully come into this church's worship. That as we lay ourselves down before your feet, your presence is glorious is awesome. Your soft, still voice, Holy Spirit, leads us and guides us and surrenders to you things that we did not even know we were holding on to. What a mighty God we serve. Jehovah Elohim. Lord, take over for me, Father. Let your Holy Spirit lead the rest of the service. Thank you for the healing that's taking place in my heart and in others' hearts while we're doing this. Thank you that you are a God that is always faithful to your promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. Amen. Someone brought it to my attention this morning. Why are we calling him Jesus if his name is Yeshua? Huh? What happened? Well, demons do submit to the name of Jesus. I've seen it. I've seen it. But his name was Yeshua. And when the, the word of the Lord speak about him, it, it is Yeshua Messiah, Christ or anointed one. Just a little interesting fact someone brought to my attention this morning. Um, this discernment messages last week and this week is a healing process. The Lord told me to speak about things in my life boldly. He said, remember, remember Bible study? <laughs> 
boldly our testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ. Boldly, we will bring the message. And he promised me a couple of years ago that there will come a time when I will be writing and healing at the same time. And it's happening. Amen. It is happening. And I know as I speak, because the Lord shows me different things happening out there, people that are listening and watching the YouTube videos, people in here that is going through a revelation and healing and repentance process. Because there can be no healing without repentance. We have to admit our own mistakes. We're human. We do dumb things. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's already repenting. I haven't even said anything else yet. But praise the Lord. Repent. No, no. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 18. We started to speak about marriage and being unequally yoked last week. Let's go back to that scripture because the beauty of the scripture goes so much further. <coughs> yeah, I, I'm not at that. I'm messing up. It won't record. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that phone will listen now and you will start recording now. Is it back? Good. I do. We now tell every unclean thing in this house, in this church, and among these people, stand back, leave the electronics alone in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, he will send his angel armies against you. Amen. Spirit of the Lord comes against them. There will be no more interruptions. Because this is such a beautiful scripture, I can think that the enemy would try to silence us. Ha! Mm. I just can't find my place. I'm just losing it all the time. Okay, there we go. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What does it mean to be yoked? Can you remember? When two oxen was put in a field, they had to be the same height, the same would pull together. If one was too weak, the other one would do all the work. If one was too small, if one was too big, equally yoked. What does the Lord say? Do not yoke yourself together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial, which is just a nice name for the devil again, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. <clears throat> Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. How beautiful is that? Would you like to be a son and a, a daughter of the Almighty King? Yes, please. This world has twisted our minds on relationships in that in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 to 18, the Lord is telling us how to correct our relationships. Do you agree? Listen. No, you have to mind who you hang around with. 
mind, your territory. And we started to speak about marriage last week because it cannot be yoked unevenly. I gave you my testimony. I told you what it looked like. It was an endless wrestle match between light and darkness. And if you drop your God, drop your seal, 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 shield or sword for just a moment they pull you into darkness with them you start yelling and swearing with them you start doing the things they do and then it's all your fault according to them and it wasn't your fault you dropped your guard for just a second you cannot be unevenly yoked. Do not think that light and darkness belongs together. It is truly an endless battle. The marriage is a covenant. Remember the covenant we have with Jesus Christ? It's a blood covenant. The covenant Moses had with the Israelites was a covenant of blood also. Also, blood had to be shed for the forgiveness of sins. A covenant of marriage is two people coming into one accord, stepping in under the yoke together. How can light and darkness be yoked in a covenant together? It sounds silly, <laughs> though we keep doing it. Mm. No, young people just rush into marriage out there. I love him. I've known him two weeks. It's my whole life. <laughs> but I love her. She's pretty. Oh, my goodness. Do you see how ridiculous it is? The way we look for love. And the fact is the Lord created us to look for love. But he created us to look for love. Where? <laughs> yeah, but the human condition gets confused. And looks for love in the wrong places. A covenant between light and darkness. It will be Chaos, it will be discord, each party living according to their own rules and children under them confused for the rest of their lives. They're not knowing what's right and wrong. If you step under that yoke, you better be certain. Light in agreement with the word of the Lord Almighty, always. Darkness in agreement lies, steals, cheats, kills, destroys, knows no other way. Are you seeing the yoke in your spiritual eye? Are you understanding that they cannot come together? Because simply because the word of the Lord says so, and it makes perfect sense. This is not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to figure this out. It really doesn't. Every relationship you walk into, whether it's a friendship, whatever it is, put it on the scale and see if you belong there. Is this person walking in light or is this person choosing Satan every time? So they're not going to stop and they're not going to change. Yet we try to bring them in union where they do not belong and we wonder why things keep getting worse. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, the devil is coming against me. No, honey, you're yoked unevenly. You chose a spouse that does not belong to the Lord, does not even begin to understand the word of the Lord. You walk in darkness, being crushed by it around every corner. You think, oh no, that's not possible. I am a child of the king. Okay, I am not going to tell you how old I am, but think about your age right now. 
<laughs> I won't say it out loud. But anyway. That is how long you've been battling. How long have the demons been bat battling? Longer. Longer. Much, much longer. We'll get to the um, roots a bit later in this um, series. Much longer. They're much trickier than you think. You're going to drop your guard every now and then. Because they've been doing it longer. They understand people. They're watching. They're waiting for the right opportunity at all times. So, now, my husband did not believe in Christ, but he is a Christian. That means nothing to me. Does not believe in the word of the Lord. Does not believe in this. I don't care. If you don't have the full package of who God is, bye-bye. Uh, Go look for another, someone else. You've got the wrong woman or the wrong man. You are in the wrong place. Now, what are the chances? You see, if a man marries an ungodly woman, the statistics, and I'm giving you statistics today. If a man under the Lord marries an ungodly wife, her chances to children to grow up under the law and under, not under the law, under Jesus Christ, under the word of the Lord, same rules, same life is the same. But if a woman is in Christ and she marries a man without him, her chances is but 16% to get her husband into church. Because men are, and women are different. Women are made to submit under the man of the house. Men are supposed to lead them, wash them with the word of the Lord. They're supposed to have the word of the Lord on their tongue, day, night, the word says. When they sit, when they stand, when they get up, they're supposed to live for the Lord and lead their children to him and wash his wife with them. One wife, beautiful before him, without flick or speck or blemish ever, always washing her, adoring the church as the Jesus did, adoring his wife. That is a godly man. You will not find that kind of man in darkness. I do not care what rock you picked up. He's not under there. So men do have a bigger chance, but tell her, <laughs> 94%, which means there's a 6% difference. I like to look at the positive. Yes, that's nice. But look at the 6% difference. There's 6% of those women that will rebel, rebel against the man and never get to the Lord. Problem. Don't think you can fix them after marriage, please. <clears throat> Do it beforehand or let it go. Do not be deceived because your battle is not against the husband or the wife. Your battle is still against darkness. Do not look to the person and wonder what happened. Believe that the person you married was created to seek the kingdom was created to look to the Lord, was created for all these things the Lord said a husband or wife were supposed to be created for, but they chose a different path. It's not the Lord's mistake. He didn't, oh, oopsie, I forgot about that one. Oh, Look at him running around. Oh, my God, I forgot to tell him don't. No, you're looking for me, not other women. You're looking for me, not other men. 
the law doesn't make mistakes. It's decisions that the person make. And as this person make decisions against the king of all kings, the hope of this world, and all the hopes and dreams and future that the Lord had for that person, they turn their back toward the Lord and said, I don't want it. I want to live this life. And believe me, child of God, you will not be able to do anything about it. Choose wisely. Think about what you're doing. You see, because the enemy and this world will entice, seduce, deceive his way into marriages. Why? Because he hates marriage. Why? Because God hates divorce. That's why. Whatever the Lord does, the enemy wants to do the opposite. When you see someone acting in an opposite way than the Lord God Almighty, they live in darkness. Hello. Wake up, Addy. Sleeping. <laughs> we still serve the God of the impossible. And there's nothing in this world he would not do. For those called into his purpose. Every one of us have a purpose. If they, if, if they are in light or in darkness, it doesn't matter. You were created for that purpose. But the Lord does not force himself on people. Oh, how I prayed that he would. Many, many times, but he does not. Ephesians 6, if your battle is then not against the man or the woman you are married to or about to get married and you think they will change or whatever your situation is, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, wherever you are yoked right now. Twelve to thirteen Ephesians six. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Who you? Put on your, oh, I'm just a baby. The Lord will dress me now. Put on your armor. Put on your armor. You know what is terrible? To put on your armor in your <coughs> own house. Before you yoke yourself unevenly, think about this very carefully. Do I want to wear my armor in my own house? all the days of my life because I chose the wrong spouse. And now I'm wrestling against darkness on a daily basis. I think, I can do it. I'm a strong child of the Lord. You will get tired. How do I know these things? Well, let me tell you. See Ephesians 6, 12 verse 13 that I just read. I will not say I tasted it, that there was a night. I read this again and again and again. And, and I was a new Christian. I was a bit confused about <laughs> what? What? Not against flesh and blood. Hmm? Then against what? So, one night, I've told you last week, the most, well, most of it. My ex-husband would sleep in the living room. He made a decision. I did not throw him out of the bedroom. No wife has the place to do that. Get me straight, ladies. Don't do that. I know you want to. You go sleep on the couch. You don't take a husband out of his bed. <laughs> Ooh, a couple of ladies are giving me a couple of looks. Ooh, you leave the bed if you want someone to leave the bed. But you do not throw your husband out of bed. That is his place. He's still the ruler of your house. That's how God created him. 
Oh. <laughs> See a couple of interesting um, facial expressions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, he slept on the couch for almost four years. Because there were, was another woman. Well, we all know. We're not dumb. <laughs> Even though people do think the light is dumb. Dumber than darkness. But one night he said, I'm going to go get into bed because my back aches. I, I didn't tell him to sleep on the couch. That's what he did. That night, this verse still in my head. These two verses. Who am I struggling against then, Lord? What is going on here? What is happening? What? what? I don't, I'm not struggling against what? <laughs> okay. So I'm lying there. Clever. Not saying, saying anything pretending to be a slave. But I'm praying. I'm praying. I say, Lord, your word says I'm not struggling against flesh and blood. That is what your word says. I'm not struggling against flesh and blood. I'm struggling against darkness. I need to change my strategy because I've been fighting and praying and fasting and nothing is working. Nothing is getting better. Everything is getting worse. My children are feeling it. I'm feeling it. This whole house is falling apart. This marriage is falling apart. Help me, Lord. I need you tonight like I need you more than ever. And that night, as I was praying, I waked up and I listened for him to fall into that deep snoring sleep. You know when your spouse is sleeping. Let me do that. Some of them. Much louder. Some in church. <laughs> Max <laughs> and I said Lord I'm going to stretch out my hand and touch this man tonight I do not want to but I will and I ask you Lord to flow through me like you've never flown through me before burned through me before because he's an all consuming fire I trust you, Lord, now I'm going to stretch out my hand and touch him and you have to remove every demonic force in this house and this marriage right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I will not take anything less. But if this battle is lost, Lord, show me that it's lost. But there's nothing my God cannot do. So I trust you. And the Holy Spirit started to burn inside of me like fire. And I stretched out my head and I was too scared to touch him like that. I was new at this. So I turned my hand and I just stretched out my hand and I just touched his leg lightly. And I said, flow through me, spirit. And I could feel the spirit just growing warmer and warmer and warmer. And I know he was in a deep sleep. But the next moment he jumped out of the bed, he grabbed his throat and his chest. And he started to yell at me, you're trying to kill me. I've known for years that you tried to kill me. Now, the thing about new Christians is <laughs> that the word can tell you these things. But you're not quite prepared for the manifestation. The first couple of times, he yelled out of the he ran out of the room, still grasping for breath. And I'm sitting on the bed like, what? <gasps> and then I had the audacity because I'm young and dumb. And the spirit, I said, what was that, Lord? I just asked him. He showed me. It was that. What? <laughs> it is a shock to see it for the first time, but I can tell you for sure. Your battle is not against flesh and blood. The enemy can see the anointing on your life and he wants nothing more than to snuff your light out. And he will use the person you are married to to do it. And if that person is not under the Lord Jesus Christ, covered in his blood, <coughs> light and love, he is wide open for demonic activity. Wide open. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
and your armor will start getting heavy every now and then. You will feel you need a break. I'm not speaking about a month or a week. I'm speaking about years of wrestling. Every sentence, every time you open your mouth, it's a wrestle match. Every time he opens his mouth, it's a wrestle match against light and darkness all day long. How can you do it? Because I've done it for many years. And I failed many times. And I ended up on my knees, have to repent because he pulled me into the darkness with him. Do not do that to yourselves. Don't do it. Think carefully. Make wise decisions. I love the Holy Spirit so much. He has showed me things that I can't even begin. If I have to start speaking about all these things, I'll never stop. You see, but now I knew I was fighting against demonic powers. I was not fighting against a person. So, I believed our Father moves in mighty ways, but the one, this one left me kind of speechless. The Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God. So what did I do? I went back to scripture. I needed new strategy. I was in a fight with the demonic. And the first time you think about it, it's kind of scary, but it's not really because Jesus won. <laughs> what do you call it when you give away a movie? You... Huh? Spoiler alert! Jesus won. Okay. <laughs> Donkey. The devil is a defeated foe and there is nothing my God cannot do. The battle strategy just had to change, but the battle is not lost. So I prayed, I fasted, I spoke life. Let's go look at John uh, Luke 10, verse 17 to 19. This is what I changed my battle strategy to. And if you do not have a battle strategy and you are unequally yoked. I do not know why I've got the wrong verses. Listen to this. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, that's Jesus. Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. <laughs> Behold, I gave you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you know that? I didn't. <laughs> Back then, I didn't. So I said, oh, really, Lord? Mm -hmm. so, 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 Lord, you're telling me <laughs> that the Father gave you, Jesus all the authority and now he's given it to me. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. I can, I, can, I can battle with that. That's a new strategy. That means... I already have victory. The victory is the Lord's. It's already mine. I'm going to keep fighting. And let me tell you, during that, through the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the perfect Lamb of God, victory truly was mine because I drove out many demons, out of many people, but not my ex-husband. And you would say, why? How is it possible that the Lord gave you all this authority and gave you all this authority to drive out demons, to trample on serpents and scorpions? But then there's always this one little oak in your house or person in your family or person in a friend circle that you just can't get rid of those demons. 
You see, the power of casting out demons belongs to Jesus Christ. Do you remember? It's about our relationship with the Father that we have access to the gifts of the Spirit. That is it. So I've been driving out demons, going through all these things, but it was long after the divorce that I understood that the Lord would not give me authority over his demons. I will never have it. Why? <laughs> Why? 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 Yeah, we can throw a tantrum about it. It's good. The demons still listen when we speak. But those demons would not. Yes, it's got a lot to do with how he was raised. He was used to his demons. He saw them. His whole life, he thought it was normal to have them. He didn't understand that he was not acting godly. Just as I didn't understand before the Lord took a hold of me. Just as a lot of us did not understand what godliness was. Because our parents did not live under the light of Jesus Christ. If they like their demons and they hold on to them, you're going to have a hell of a time to get them out. If they do not surrender their flaws and faults to Jesus Christ, they will hold on to the demon and the demon will hold on to them and drag them to hell afterwards. If they do not recognize that they made a mistake, that they hurt, they are hurting children of light, they are coming against the children of God by the things they are doing. They're not only sinning against their wives or husbands, they're sinning against the Lord God Almighty himself. If they do not realize and it doesn't snap in place and only the Holy Spirit can snap that in place for you, it's not going to work. And the Lord knew it. The Lord could not bring me to my purpose while I was yoked to darkness. Think about your marriage. Think about your relationships in your life right now. The people you live with, the, the relationships you have, the friendships you have. Just take a moment. Boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Are you yoked equally? Are you? It's going to be a wrestle match if you're not. Or do you speak about the Lord? I've had some friendships like that speak about the Lord and they laugh at me. The fact is, you're going to speak what your heart is full of. If the heart is full of Jesus, <laughs> if this blood and these veins pump <laughs> the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to speak about him all the time because I love him. Mm, you just can't help yourself. I'm thinking about Marius. He's telling people at his workplace, <laughs> you come close to me, you want to speak to me about something, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Why? Because he loves him. He loves Jesus. <laughs> He's going to tell people about him everywhere he goes. He's going to bless people. He's going to act like love looks. He's going to carry the fruit of the Spirit. He's going to uh, try to tell people how amazing Jesus is. But not all of them will expect, accept it. Not all of them can understand it. You, you see, because Jesus will uproot your whole life. And change you for the better. But they don't know that. They don't understand that. Not yet. Hopefully there will be a day when they will. But if it's not now, you cannot say when it will be. I'm going to marry this person. It's going to change. The Lord said it'll change. Mm -hmm. How long will that take? Do you have an idea how long you will wrestle with darkness? Even if it takes 50 years, you do not know what you're saying, honey. Mm -mm. Stop lying to yourself. You have no idea. You see, the, the, the gift of casting our demons belong to Jesus. 
And a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Do you remember that? We worked through it in Bible study. So now, a city on a hill, a light that was being prepared for purpose, are yoked to darkness. What can the Lord do with the light? If wherever the light goes, the darkness follows. Because why? How? What is marriage? We became one in spirit. That's why the battle is so terrible. Because you're one in spirit. The Lord does not see two people anymore. He sees one. His sin is your sin. Your sin is his sin. And thank you. For those who still have to get married. No, thank you. After the yoke started to lift a little bit, and I seeked that kingdom purpose, and the Father spoke to me about the dreams that he had for me. And the dreams he has for, had for me was the dreams he had for his sheep. He wanted me to step out, so I knew, I prayed, I said, Father, what will happen? And he showed me a divorce, and he says, this is the only way. This is the only way. You need to come to full purpose or you will always live way under your capability. I created you for so much more than to wrestle with darkness. I created you to take the name of the Lord all over the world. And as long as you are yoked to darkness, darkness will not allow it. Get away. Sometimes there will be sacrifice. Jesus said, Luke 14, 26 to 33. Sometimes there has to be sacrifice when you are called to the purpose of the Lord God Almighty. And I am looking at people that I knew, know as lost families also for this lost their families, not speaking to their mothers, their fathers, their sisters, their brothers. And we have it lightly. Because in these countries, when you say, I love Jesus Christ, they will, your own family will take you out in the street and cut out your tongue. This is light. South Africa is still a blessed country. No matter what you think. If anyone comes to me, this is what Jesus said. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and it is not and is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock him, saying, "This man began to build and was not able to finish." Ha ha ha! Or what king? going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who come against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, cannot be my disciple. Listen again. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, cannot become my disciple. I will say this again and again and again, because are you willing? Do you love the Lord your God more than you love your children? Yes, I do. And my children has known it a long, long time. I love them, but I love the Lord more. If I ever had to make a decision, and it has come to that once or twice, 
Will I choose my children over my Jesus? I will choose Jesus. That's just the way it is. That is the sacrifice. That is the sacrifice. Will you, if your children walks in darkness and you say, oh, well done, my boy. Well done. You go. I'll stand with you. Whatever you do, then you are in darkness. You're a bad parent. You're supposed to say, honey, the word of the Lord says, get your act together. What are you doing? And if, you, if the child wants to turn his back on you and walk away, <laughs> and walk away, let them go. Because I'm not going to hell for them. If they are fornicators, adulterers, lovers of selves, I will make my voice known very clearly that my God means more to me. Watch out. And I will lead them back to light. Why? Because if I truly love my children, if I truly know what love is, I will not let my children sin against the Lord. I will not see their souls go to hell because I want their. Oh, mama's so cool. No, mama's not cool. Mama loves Jesus. And Mama will stand up for Jesus and for what is right in everything I do. If it means that I hurt your little feelings, oh, run to the Lord with it. Don't come to me. If you are sinning against the Lord, I will tell you what you are doing. The Lord does not choose ministry, his people in ministry, to be quiet and to look on to sin. And be quiet about it. He called us because we are bold and courageous and strong. And will tell you, you are going in the wrong direction. Where are you going? Get back to the Lord. Submit. Repent. Go on your knees and beg for forgiveness. What are you doing? And then it's your choice. That's all we can do. The Lord had to take me through this process this last week. We, he told me how much I was responsible for everyone's souls. Because I believe 100% all the time. I think quite too much of myself, if you think about it. The Lord is in control of their souls, and they are in control of their souls. The Lord told me that everyone, I want to, I want to tell you a secret now, because I prayed for you guys too. <laughs> and the Lord said, my child, 20%. I said, Father, 20%? He says, 80% for your own soul, 20% for theirs. They have to get their own souls saved. You can't do it for them. Praise the Lord. They have to repent on their own for their sin. You can't do it. Praise the Lord. There was a weight that fell off my shoulders. It felt like 50 kilograms. Oh, bring the scale. No. <laughs> Don't do it. No, that doesn't do me. Are you willing to give everything up? Or do you still want to own things? I'm not going to talk to that child of mine. She's rude. Oh, my goodness. Why are you submissive to your child? Why? Do what is right. Consider the cost, Jesus said. If following Jesus Christ has not cost you anything yet, you are probably a very new Christian. Or you are not one at all. If your family is still intact, you're not a Christian. You don't scare them. They don't think anything of you. Ah, oh, what a weak little Christian. We can do whatever we want in front of this little Christian. They'll just say, high five, you go, girl. Why not finish that bottle of whiskey? Why not? 
I'm just going to look the other way, Lord. Please excuse me. No, it doesn't work like that. Their blood is on your hands now. Especially your, your children. You will answer the way you raise them. You will answer. If you're scared of your children, not my problem. You will answer. Because when it comes to my children, to get them into heaven, ah, now we're not talking about 20% anymore. Now we're talking at least 60%. I had to lead them in the ways of the Lord. I had to raise them. It was not even my work. It was the work of the husband in the house, but he was in darkness. He's still living there. He was not able to teach my children about the Lord. I took his place. I had to sin against the Lord to get my children to a 60%. I had to go against an ungodly man to teach my children. But I did it. And I'll do it again. Harder next time. If it, no, thank you, Lord. I don't want to go through that again. Okay. <laughs> if you choose a born again son and daughter of the Lord to yoke yourself with, to put the yoke on, what, how lovely. <sighs> I'm thinking about you guys, yeah. Nicolene and Diaval. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bless you. I'm not going to call everyone's names. Ridiculous. <laughs> Looking me. Me like, what about us? Ah, uh, all of you. <laughs> if you're together in church, if you follow the Lord together, how beautiful. Because before you go into marriage, now you can pray about it together. Now you can go together and say, you know, the word of the Lord says this is how we are supposed to live. What do you think? And of course, the other child of the Lord is going to say, yes, I absolutely agree with you. Can you imagine just for a moment what a marriage like that would look like? Because I'm living in one. Peaceful. Peaceful. Why? Because no one is control except Jesus Christ. And I fear the Lord. So when Maria is saying, no, it's no. I understand my position. I, I don't try to overrule him. I, of course, I'll try to a little bit, just, but I don't quite agree. But he's going to win. Who's going to win? If you try to argue with the Lord, who's going to win? The Lord, you're going to lose. <laughs> women you're supposed to stand with your husband yes but if it comes to really big decisions he is the one that makes the decisions if he's a godly man it's easy if he's not mm. that's going to be hard you see because women submit to men under Jesus Christ but we cannot do it into sin because we submit to Jesus Christ first remember again what we just read in Luke 14 who does not hate his father and mother that's of course a bit harsh but and well Jesus said it who does not say to the husband oh no thank you you sin I will not do that because I am a child of God who does not, of course, they'll call you rebellious. A woman is supposed to submit under her husband, under her own husband, especially her own husband, not some anyone. <laughs> and he better be a godly man or you're going to have a hard time doing so. You're going to repent more than anything else. Consider the cost. According to this world, it's easy to get a divorce. But what does the Lord say about divorce? You see, because this world doesn't care. They get divorces left, right, and center. Call this number for e cheap, easy divorce. Everywhere you look. But a child of God would not consider that. 
Why won't we consider that? Except if there was adultery. Listen to me carefully. If there was adultery, if the husband or the wife slept out of the wedlock, they call it. Yeah, no. Yes, if there was adultery, you are allowed to divorce. You are. But what does the Lord say about divorce? You see, you can go read this on your own in Malachi 2. It says, God hates divorce because he made two people one spirit. It's a covenant. And breaking that covenant means that the Lord will not receive your offers. If you pray, you will not get received. Your prayers will go unanswered. Why? He says, he hates the man who dresses himself with violence. That is what a divorce is. And he will never hear his prayer. Do you understand now what I told you last, last week? That the Lord told me, you're not allowed to divorce. He must divorce you. Even if he was the adulterer, it doesn't matter. He must divorce you. Because the word of the Lord cannot be changed. He still hates divorce. And I need my prayers answered, please, Lord. So I had to wait for a divorce. And that's okay. Because I still speak freely to my father. Every day. He's the only one that can heal the situation. You see, the Holy Spirit gave us a spirit of truth and power. Moses said, oh no, Jesus said, sorry, Jesus said, Moses allowed a letter to be given to a wife to divorce. And Jesus also said, but I tell you, they were weak. How can a person today be weak if we have received the Holy Spirit? Not possible. We are not weak. We receive the power of, of love and strength and, and no fear and a sound mind. There's no way we can be weak anymore. So Jesus said, no, he doesn't allow, allow marry, uh, divorce except for adultery. Because that means, because yes, if th there's this little thing the South African, the Afrikaans people say. If a dog bites a chicken once, it's going to do it again. Mm -hmm. There are men that submitted under Christ and women I know of that has gone out of their marriage into adultery. They have. And they did turn themselves to the Lord, submitting themselves, leaving their sin behind, completely repenting. And they are having great marriages today. They have great marriages. They stand together through thick and thin under Christ. But if only one submits to the Lord and the other one does not, that's not going to happen. The dog will keep chasing the chickens for a taste of the blood. Mm -hmm. That is why I make it such a big deal to tell you that the butterflies you feel in your stomach for someone is deceiving. Love has nothing to do with butterflies. They're beautiful. I love butterflies, but not to my stomach. <laughs> Some of you know science. You know if, if, a, if a, a woman gives off a certain scent, especially certain times that lures men and can give them butterflies on their stomach. If you have to go and fall in love with everyone that gives you butterflies on your stomach, you're going to get married every three days. Don't do that. It's not about the butterflies. It's not about lust. It's not about perversion. Sex is not love. Get over it. You cannot fill yourself with stuff like that. Only Jesus can fill you. If you're looking for fulfillment in something like that, you're way off. That is made for a marriage between man and woman. So the Lord said, remind them of this. 
Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4, 13, verse 4 to 8. I know this horse has been ridden like its knees are buckling already, but I, I love this horse. Love. What I call the rules of love. Listen to me carefully and think about your husband, wife, future husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. Think about them. Now let's weigh your relationship. According to the Lord, love is patient. Thank you, Lord, because his love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. I'm sorry, I'm reading out of the New Living uh, Translation. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So explain something to me, children of the Lord. How do we fall out of love if that is love? Show me how you fall into that. Or out of it. Oh my goodness, I fell into 1 Corinthians 4 13. I'm just so patient and kind and loving and I'm not easily offended. And I give no records of wrongs. I just fell into it. Oh my goodness, I fell out. I just don't love you anymore. I want a divorce because we've grown apart. I just don't love you anymore. How did you fall out of that? Uh, what a silly notion. <laughs> Thank the Lord no one can take me out of his hand. Because um, he never stops loving me. He never stops loving you. He doesn't fall out of love with you, child of God. So how is it possible that you can fall out of love with someone? This is bad if you look at the statistics of divorce out there. This is bad. Why is no one speaking about it? I am, just now. No one else wants to touch it with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> you are supposed to love everyone like the love Lord loves them. That means you do not marry someone you're just falling in love with. I've fallen and I can't get up. Don't be silly. That's just feelings and that feeling will pass. And then, stuck for the rest of your life, child of God. Think wisely. Consider the cost, says the Lord. You can. You receive the sound mind. You can consider the cost. You don't have to marry the first guy that came around, the first girl. Oh, but she's pretty and blonde. Doesn't matter. Make wise decisions. Consider the costs of everything you do. Is it for Jesus? Does it have eternal value? Or will it steal your eternity from you? That is the question. The fear of the Lord is still the beginning of wisdom. Have wisdom. But start in the fear of the Lord. Start there. Because if you fear the Lord, you will not let your spouse be whoever and treat your children however and do whatever, whenever. And let your children do whatever. If you do fear the Lord, if you do love the Lord, you will say, no, not acceptable. I won't do that. I will not anger my God. And you will not, and you will respect me even if it's just as your parent. If you have no respect for my God, then you will have respect for me. If you do not like it, get out of my house. Because this is the house of the Lord. What happened to people's spines? I know the Lord created them. They're still in there, sure. 
the Lord said, if yeah, this is so beautiful, you know, when you run after love, you're looking for love. Remember when Jesus spoke and he said about the things the pagans want, do not worry about what you will wear, what you will eat. Do not worry about these things because these are the things the pagans seek after. And as I, I worked through this, the Lord said, and this is for love too. Because people think that they are desperate for love and have to marry as quickly as possible. But this is for love too. For the pagans ran, run after all these things and your father in heaven knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Consider the cost. What you think you need and what the Lord knows you need does not always look the same. It really doesn't. So seek first the kingdom of the Lord and he will give you what you need. And no, there might be when you meet your spouse, there might not be butterflies <laughs> and all kinds of chemistry. But listen to the Lord when he says, this is the one I created for you. Because he has a good plan for you. Amen. So I'm sorry for bad news for those that are married and unevenly yoked. And do not try to entrap your partner by trying to, oh, you cheated, I let my friend call you and say, meet me. In a, you know, <laughs> it's still going to hurt. Believe me. Breaking a covenant like a marriage hurts. It hurts. When someone else does it to you, it hurts. Please don't do it to your spouse. Unnecessary. And if you are the adulterer, you are not allowed to get married again. But we'll get to that. Because you will be an adulterer forever and the Lord will not recognize your marriage. So you're not allowed to divorce. If, if you were too weak to keep... <sighs> okay, wait. I'm going to look for other words. That's what's happening in my brain right now. If you are too weak to stay with your spouse, like you should, okay, <laughs> then you're too, too weak to, to go into marriage. Stay married to the Lord, Paul said, because you're too weak. If you can't handle just having one wife and one husband, you're too weak for more. Why would you want to go hurt someone else? You know what your character is like now. Hurt other children and women and men. Why? Stop it. Get under the fear of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty Father, I need everyone that is divorced to lift your hands quickly. Mm -hmm. They did not know this. Father, I pray for everyone here, Lord, and I know your word cuts, Lord, and that's why we take your word in, because your word is supposed to cut us and bring us to the right path. Father, divorce is such an ugly thing in your eyes, Lord, because you never leave us and never forsake us. You never leave and forsake your church, Lord. How is it possible that man and woman that you put together can separate? Father, I ask you to forgive us because we are weak. We are weak people, Lord. Father, teach us in a beautiful new way that only you can do what real love really looks like. Not what the world says it looks like, what it looks like to you, Lord. And lead us and guide us and teach us to love like you, not only our spouses, but our children, not only our children, but our families, not only our, our families, but our friends. You will put us on this earth to become the fullness of Christ, Lord. Shepherd, lead us. 
we can't do it without you. It does not take weaklings to follow your love. Make us strong and courageous to follow you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.